Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome here as we get ready for knockout qualifying at the Monster Mile Dover International Raceway, getting set for qualifying for our 12th race of the season. This is going to be a very interesting qualifying session in the fact that this is a mile racetrack, as obviously stated in the Monster Mile, but these drivers only have five minutes in which to lay down lap time and this is a track that's a little bit smaller than a couple of the tracks we've been to recently, like Talladega, Pocono, which were much longer, and they were only able to get in maybe two to three laps on the clock. They'll be able to get a couple more laps in here at Dover if they get out early. We saw a couple of drivers already leaving the uh, pit road, and they're going to get out there and have the benefit of running as many possible laps as they can. Joshua Circuli there in the 47 is the first one off. Now we're going to be talking in, I think it's the second session, second heat of this first round of qualifying about Kyle Keith, who's in the same situation that Joshua Circuli found himself in a couple of weeks ago when he went to Victory Lane at Martinsville. At the time, he was a non-chartered go-or-go-home machine. Now he's got a charter that they purchased from Joanna Atwood Motorsports and the 2017. But Kyle Keith, as far as we know, there has not been any wheeling and dealing yet as far as what kind of a charter that team's going to get for him to try and make the chase after his win last week at Pocono. And the first lap laid down by Joshua Circuli. It's going to be a 27.200 flat. And that is the fastest of the drivers that have already turned the lap. Joseph Circuli with a 27.7. Kyle Matthews is 28.1. As the track gets more congested, it may be more difficult for drivers to turn faster laps, too, so we've got to keep that in mind. The lead's going to get swapped around quite a bit here, I believe, as right now, Sean Galligan is at the top of the leaderboard. And I was looking back, going back to the uh, Kyle Keith situation, and Kyle Keith has three teammates at Sega Motorsports that are chartered machines. The one of team owner Trent Dunham, the eight of Ryan Madden, and the 48 of Sean Galligan. Now, those three drivers, here's the situation. If one of those three were to give up their charter, I've looked at the average starting spot for all three of those drivers, and it's not good, meaning that those drivers would then end up taking on the status as one of those cars actually right back here, Ryan Madden in the 8, Sean Galligan, the other teammate as well in the 48. If they took on the status of a non-chartered go-or-go-home driver, the, you know, there's very good odds that they would not make a number of races leading up to the end of the regular season. So you got to wonder what Sega Motorsports is going to do. Are they going to take one of the charters from one of these teams? Are they going to not even bother giving a charter to the 42 team and just have them try and make the races on their own? Or are they going to try and purchase a charter from another team? Sean Galligan right now second fastest on track. I'll tell you one team that's really found a lot of speed lately. If I can find them. Right now they are top of the leaderboard and that is, there he is, Seth Cole in the Hot Wheels Chevrolet. Qualified well last week at Pocono, ran well at Pocono. Right now is the fastest on track with a 26.006. .006. And he's bringing that car to pit road. Trent Dunham also on pit road. Right now ninth fastest in the Sega Chevrolet with about 50 seconds to go. Final transfer spot right now is being held by the U.S. Army Chevrolet of Ryan Madden. There he is. 26.722 is the lap time. Oh, he just beat it. 26.561 and that dropped Anthony McCrory now to the bubble spot. So now the Audi A5 out of Kyotech Racing is in trouble and he just jumped up to 11th as soon as I was going to jump to him and that puts Jessica Shelton out in 13th. McCrory right now actually just got put back to the bubble spot in 12th place. So now Shelton would be eliminated. Mongols just on the outside looking in. Same with Aaron Henderson. Five seconds to go. Can McCrory hang on to that 12th spot? He did not beat his lap time. And now 25 seconds left for somebody to 
try and beat a 20. Oh, oh, somebody just did. Aaron Henderson just jumped up to 12th. And McCrory's been eliminated for moving on to the next round. There's Henderson. He's now up to 12th. 26.684 now the benchmark for drivers outside of the top 12. And it's over. Aaron Henderson, a last minute move, gets him into the next round of qualifying, eliminating out the defending champion, Anthony McCrory. So how about that? And where the heck the young motorsports cars come from? They just jumped up to first and second, 25, eight and 25, nine for Dylan Young and Levi McIntyre. Holy cow. I didn't know, I didn't think anybody was gonna be able to beat Seth Cole's 26 flat, but Driver, man, oh man, how about car. that? So the drivers that will move on to the next round of qualifying will be Dylan Young, Levi McIntyre, Seth Cole, Keith Batson, Sean Galligan, Ryan Madden, Joshua Circuli, seventh fastest, Daniel Voiles, Matthew Dalio up there in ninth place. Remember Dalio ended up uh, making it into the next round of qualifying last week at Pocono, but was not high enough for the go or go home drivers to make it in. Jake Baskinger, this is the second week in a row. He'll move on to the next round of qualifying. Trent Dunham, this is the most speed we've seen out of him. Looks like three of the Sega Motorsports cars will be moving into the next round. And Aaron Henderson will get the final transfer spot into the second round of qualifying. So drivers that are go or go home drivers moving in will be Seth Cole, Keith Batson, uh, along with Matthew Dalio and Aaron Henderson. That's four go or go home drivers. So the most we can have is three in the next round or else we're going to have drivers moving into round number two that are going to be going home regardless. And drivers that officially will not be starting this race if we get more than three drivers moving into the next round in heat number two will include Austin Mongol, Elijah Gordon, O'Neill Balvin, Kat Tellier, John Gilbert, Stephanie Gardner, Zachary Stoltz, and Garrett Sidner. So that does it for the first round of qualifying, or make it the first half of the first round of qualifying. Let's get ready now for the second heat in round number one. Getting ready for our second heat of this first round of qualifying. Two of the young motorsports cars were the top two in speeds in the first half of this first round. Dylan Young the fastest, Levi McIntyre second fastest, and their teammate JT Bryant wasting no time getting out on track here. So we'll see if maybe all three of the young motorsports Ford Fusions can move into the next round of qualifying. While we're waiting for drivers to get on the racetrack and put down their first lap times of the day in this session, just want to remind everybody that there are still rides available in this series. If you still want to take part in the Hershey's Cup Series, you are more than welcome to. Just basically take a look here in these first two heats at what numbers are not really being used and you can uh, sign up for those rides. You will, however, be a non-chartered car, which means you are not guaranteed that you're going to make it into every single race. It's not even guaranteed you're going to make it into one race. 27.971, the first lap time laid down by JT Bryant. Charles Samfer, apparently his pit stall was back behind the start finish line. It scored him with a 44.4, but his first official lap time will be scored this time by. As he moves by in the Reese's Pieces Chevrolet. Two-time winner this season at Atlanta and Talladega. And he tops the leaderboard with a 26.207. So we know these drivers are capable of hitting the 25s. Low 26s to high 25s is where the uh, fastest on track will probably be running by time this heat is over. As Sanford's going to battle side by side with William Brock. Side by side racing doesn't normally help you produce good speed as Samper is able to beat his lap, now at 26.114. Brock now up to second fastest, 26.706. Surprisingly, those two, the only two that have hit the 26 lap times yet. That'll change though. Manual Hartnett just did. Whoa, there's some smoke there. Someone had trouble. That was Joe Rockingham. Problems for the 84 out of I forgot even what the, the team was called. I've got the list here somewhere, but I'm not even gonna bother looking for it. 
And he's got right side damage. I couldn't tell if he maybe got into somebody else. And if he did, my suspicion might be John Cinedino or Marie Minobi, one of the cars out of Fire Ice Racing. I thought I just saw Kyle Keith in the 42. Of course, he was our winner last week. Oh, uh, maybe he was the one that was involved. Where is the 42 car? There he is. He came to pit road, apparently. Right now, 23rd fastest, and he needs something better than that to get himself into the next round of qualifying to have his win count for anything in his quest to get into the top 30 in points. I saw John Andrews in the 17 coming to pit road. He's got damage. I wonder if he and... Rockingham might have been the two that got together and there's Cittadino. I think he might have also been involved in whatever the situation was So right now the two-time winner Charles Sanford tops the leaderboard Not too far behind him is that car right there Michael Norman Sanford with a 25 point oh and Michael Norman just took the top spot as soon as I say that 25.785 now the benchmark set by the NXT Chevrolet And it's Sanford Zach Rogers, William Brock, Nathan Hudson, Johnny Gardner, John Arndt, Emmanuel Hartnett, Marie Minobi, Chris Dodd, Dallas McIntosh, and right now Marty Johnson in the 20 car, the rookie out of Joe Gibbs Racing, who finished second last week at Pocono. He's currently in the final transfer position with about 30 seconds to go. The car that's trying to run him down for that 12th position is just ahead of him, Dougie Shears. Whoa, there you go. Marty Johnson just jumped up into the top 12. And jo so did Joshua Michaels. Marie Minobi now on the bubble spot. Chris Dodd actually just got eliminated out of the top 12 with that. And so now at 27.038, two 1,000 slower than 11th, one 1,000 faster than 13th. Just shows you how close it is. 15 seconds left. Marie Minobi trying to hang on to make the main event. Manuel Hartnett, team owner, running right behind her, trying to help her. Oh, nope, someone just beat it. And Marty Johnson just fell into the 12th position. So Minobi's eliminated at this point. Marty Johnson now in the final transfer spot once again. I don't know who it was that jumped up into the top 12, but whoever it is, they have just locked themselves into the next round. And it was Kyle Keith, believe it or not. Kyle Keith in the 42, up to eighth place, and no charter. He's gonna try and get into the top 30 in points on his own. Up to eighth for the session. And how about that? Drivers. So Michael car. Norman the fastest in this session, Charles Sanford second, again two drivers hitting the 25s, but Michael Norman the fastest lap in this session so far today, 25.690, that is a lightning fast lap time. John Arndt, he'll move into the next round, great run there for him. Zach Rogers, Joshua Michaels, William Brock, Nathan Hudson, Kyle Keith, Dallas McIntosh, Emmanuel Hartnett, Johnny Gardner and Marty Johnson will all move into the next round of qualifying. Here's the interesting part. This is like the first time, I think this is the fewest number of go or go home drivers that have moved into round number two. Eight in total, four from the first heat, four from the second heat, which means one driver, unfortunately, out of eight is going to be going home based on the speeds in our second round of qualifying. Who's it gonna be? We're gonna find out. Who's gonna move into the next round of qualifying? to be able to try and start on the pole position. We'll find that out as well. Don't go away. Let's show you your full results there. There you go. Drivers that will officially not be starting this race. At this point will be Marie Minobi, Dougie Shears, uh, James McLeod, Jason Haywood, Holden Gluba, Joe Rockingham, Noah Cars, Rocco Twyman, Davey Johnson, Pichu London, and John Andrews. So don't go away. We're gonna go now to our second round of qualifying here at Dover. All right, so as we get ready for our second round of qualifying, Seth Cole, first one off, led a good portion of the first half of the first round of qualifying before the Young Motorsports duo teamed up on him and 
took the top two spots there. Dylan Young, Levi McIntyre, who we just saw, the 99, leaving pit road. Up to this point, only two cars coming off pit lane. Gotta wonder what they're waiting for, but Seth Cole out of Seth Cole Baker Motorsports last week ended up having his best finish of the season. Finishing inside the top 10 at Pocono. Has a chance to make back-to-back -back races here. I don't know, maybe uh, running Hot Wheels paint scheme has made that car a little faster? Who knows? Ryan Madden now leaving the pit lane, merging on the back straightaway. And let's see what Seth Cole lays down. It's been about a 26.7 or so that the first laps have been. Let's see if Seth Cole runs any faster, any slower, and this time it's a 27.630. Wow, that's a really slow first lap. There you go, Mike. There's Levi McIntyre's first lap, 26.980. That's at least a little bit closer to on par to what these uh, drivers, when they first come off pit road, have been turning. Seth Cole's lap time going to get hurt just a little bit there, having to go around the outside of Emmanuel Hartnett and 27.080. Don't think Seth Cole's going to be moving on to the next round. If he is, I'd be very much surprised. Levi McIntyre, 26.711, the lap time he was just laid down. Maybe got a little draft off of Ryan Madden, not sure. Now he's going to go to the inside. They were three wide for a brief moment there with Daniel Boyles down on the apron coming onto the racetrack. And Zach Rogers, top of the leaderboard. 26.5. Good run right there. Good lap time by the Shell Pennzoil Platinum Dodge Dart out of Bulldog Motorsports. He's going to have to hold off the young duo. Dylan Young, Levi McIntyre. They are second and third right now in the speed charts. And how about Kyle Keith up there to fifth? Aaron Henderson just barely made his way, and he just jumped up to the second position, 26.760. Oh, car on the wall back there. That was Ryan Madden riding the wall out of turn number four. I don't think he got any damage from it, but trying to get out of the way of his Sega Motorsports teammate, Sean Galligan, as well as Daniel Voiles from USA Motorsports. Joshua Michaels coming on track there. Boy, things starting to get congested here. We've only got 24 cars on the racetrack, but definitely is congested here at this point. Oh, Dylan Young in quite a bit of traffic. And Keith Batson. He's the first car to hit the 25s in this round. 25.987 for the Sprite Ford out of KAB Motorsports. There he is. How about that? And he just beat his own lap time, 25.809. Well, if you want to make sure you're going to move into the next round of qualifying and start this race, Keith Batson just got it done right there. Run a 25-second lap time. Now, right now, all 24 cars have turned a lap. The one that is running the lowest of the go-or-go-home drivers is Marty Johnson. Just ahead of him, Matthew Dalio, 27.6 for Dalio, 27.7 for Marty Johnson. Those two are fighting for the final transfer spot in this race. And Marty just beat it, so now Dalio is in the spot that would have him not starting this event. He's got to beat Marty Johnson's lap time, now at 27.048. Matthew Dalio would not want to have it be two weeks in a row where he makes it into the second round of qualifying and gets eliminated from competing in the main event. Wow, some close quarter racing right there between Keith Batson and William Brock. If I were Batson, I wouldn't try and uh, do anything here. Keep in mind, we had an incident take place in the second heat. And if any of these drivers get involved in a wreck and have to go to a backup car, they are not going to move on to the next round of qualifying. There's Kyle Keith, right now 12th fastest. He would move into the next round of qualifying. As we look down and see, no, Matthew Dalio is still the slowest of the go or go home drivers. Kyle Keith right now in the 12th spot. Marty Johnson, 13th, who's right behind him. 
Keith trying to hang on to move into the next round to try and qualify for the pole. He's made it into the race no matter what, though. Non-chartered car and all. Going to be looking for his second win in a row. Can Marty Johnson get him at the line? Or are they still being scored? They are not being scored. So Kyle Keith will get the final transfer spot. Nathan Hudson will move into the next round along with Dallas McIntosh, Jake Bassinger, Levi McIntyre. Joshua Michaels, Aaron Henderson, John Arndt, Johnny Gardner, Daniel Voyles, Zach Rogers, and the fastest car on track with a 25.773, the only car to hit the 25s, and that is Keith Batson. So there you go, from first on down through 12th, they will battle for the pole position. Out of all of them, I believe only two of them, so I'm looking carefully here, yes, only two of them are former pole sitters this, oh no, three of them. Keith ended up having a poll, I believe, as did Joshua Michaels and Levi McIntyre. So the drivers that will not take part in the next round of qualifying, but are going to be in the main event, 13th place Marty Johnson, 15th place Seth Cole, and there's one other one, I think. Uh, nope, I'm sorry, nope, that's it. Yep, those two. Seth Cole, Marty Johnson, they will not make it in the next round of qualifying, but they will be in the main event. Matthew Dalio comes up short yet again. Second week in a row. 21st, the fastest lap for him, 27.622. He needed to beat Seth Cole's lap time of 26.933. So the seven drivers that will move into the main event will be Keith Batson, Zach Rogers, Johnny Gardner, Aaron Henderson, Kyle Keith, Nathan Hudson, Marty Johnson, and Seth Cole. Those will be the seven. Wait a minute. I think I've done something wrong here. Let me look. Four, five, six, seven. No, Seth Cole misses the race too. Seth Cole's not going to make the race because the seven drivers that move in, Johnny Gardner's a non-chartered car. you got to remember that. So it'll be Batson, Rogers, Gardner, Henderson, Hudson, Keith, and Marty Johnson. So Seth Cole does not make the race either. So Seth Cole and Matthew Dalio both will fail to make this week's race at Dover. So that's going to be it for this second round of qualifying. Now it's time to find out who's going to be starting on the pole position. Don't go away. Round three, the final round of qualifying coming up next. All right, so now that I've got everything sorted out of who's making the race and who isn't, it's time to now find out who's going to be starting on the pole here at Dover International Raceway. Now Dover, we haven't really talked much about the track in general, but Dover is a track where track position really can play a key factor. We've seen some drivers have some difficulty here, even in this, the qualifying session. With keeping the car on the bottom, they drift up the racetrack and get the wall. And a lot of times we'll see when they start double wide, they'll try and go three wide at the start of races. And Normally, that's when you see drivers go up and hit that outside wall, and then they bounce down into traffic. So, normally, that doesn't take place up towards the front of the field, which is why these drivers, I'm sure, are very happy they made it into this round of qualifying, as the first car off is going to be Kyle Keith. He was not the first one to leave his pit stall. Johnny Gardner was. But Kyle Keith, we were talking earlier about how this is a non-charter team. Didn't have a charter coming in here to Dover, but has a win last week at Pocono. Needed to make this race on speed since they don't have a charter. What did he do? He's made it on speed. Right behind him, another similar situation, Johnny Gardner. Gardner, of course, we documented him giving up his charter to the 47 team of Joshua Circuli. And he's going to race his way into this Dover event. I don't know what it is, but it seems like ever since they gave up the charter, that 27 team's been faster, at least in qualifying. I don't know. I don't understand that. And Gardner actually gets around. Kyle Keith kind of leaves him in the dust. See what the first official lap time laid down is going to be. And it's a 26.791, so right on pace, basically, with what we've had all day long. About a 26.7, 26.8, somewhere in that range. And we'll have to see if Keith Batson can lay down another 25-second lap time. Now, keep in mind, there were only 12 cars on track now, as opposed to 24 cars that were on track before. 
so the likelihood of a 25 second lap time is slim to none, but you never know. Right now, Johnny Gardner on pace to start on the pole, 26.488. John Arch ran 26.992, he's the only other driver besides Gardner to hit the 26s so far in this session. And Dallas McIntosh just ahead of Johnny Gardner, this might hurt Gardner's lap time. Yep, it did, he was slower by two tenths. Find that 73 of Keith Batson. There he is. Wow, drifting up way high through that corner. That's not going to be a good lap time, I doubt. Unless he gets a real good run off the corner. Wow, he actually did beat his own lap time, 27.247, but nowhere close. Whoa, John Arndt in the 24 car. Just turned the fastest lap. 26.470. It's about 18 one thousandths faster than the lap turned by Johnny Gardner. And now Zach Rogers top of the leaderboard. 26.266 as John Arts coming to pit road. So Zach Rogers showing some speed right there. Right now he is situated on the pole position. Johnny Gardner would start in second as he just passed Arndt's lap time with a 26.409. John Arndt coming to pit road. And how about a 26 flat? Zach Rogers, 26.020. And Joshua Michaels, 26.4 technically. Just jumped up to second. Zach Rogers moving by Levi McIntyre. That time did not improve his lap. About a 26.184 that lap time, but it looks like I would be very surprised if anybody's gonna be able to beat Zach Rogers for the pole position. Joshua Michaels en route to be starting alongside of him. Zach Rogers team, Bulldog Motorsports, one win this season, courtesy of Leon Alvarez. Rocco Twyman in the 19 failed to make the race. Grayson Acevedo did not make it into this round of qualifying. Neither did Alvarez. And Nathan Hudson just jumped up to second. So it looks like we're going to have an all-rookie front row unless something happens here. Nathan Hudson has made a very limited number of starts. I think he's only made two starts this season. Maybe only one. I think he only made one at Martinsville. Looking to make his second start of the season for Michael Norman Motorsports. And it looks like he will be starting on the front row. Joshua Michaels just ran a 26.258, but that's about 3,100 slower than Hudson's fastest lap. And I believe scoring has ended. As we'll see when they cross the line here, if indeed scoring has ended, and it has. So Zach Rogers will be your pole sitter for the Autism Speaks 400 here at Dover. Nathan Hudson will line up alongside of him. So Driver, it is an all-rookie front row. Joshua Michaels and Johnny Gardner will make up row number two. John Art and Dallas McIntosh row three. Row four will be Levi McIntyre and Jake Baskinger. Keith Batson and Kyle Keith will make up row five. And the final row will hold Daniel Voiles and Aaron Henderson. So that's going to be your top 12 for the start of the Autism Speaks 400. The only other go or go homer you don't see here that will be starting the race will be the 20 car of Marty Johnson. So, thanks everybody for tuning in. Congratulations to Zach Rogers on gaining the pole position here at Dover. He hit the 25s, by the way, 25.806. I didn't think anybody with 12 cars on track would be able to hit the 25s, but he did. So, that's going to be a very lightning fast car. See what I did there? So we'll see you guys for our next points paying race, of course, Dover International Raceways Autism Speaks 400. Then we're going to be going to Richmond and then getting ready for All-Star Race Weekend. Look down in the description to see what the official starting lineup for this Dover race will look like. And until that race, we will see you guys next time as you've been watching a production of the NCAA Offline Racing at its best.